Are you guys aware of that meme like the boys and features like four or five Spider-Man villains in animated form? It's like Vulture, Doc Ock, Rhino, those types of guys. Like this is kind of like giving me that type of vibe right now. You got Tyrannosaurus Rex from left to right, Tyrannosaurus Rex, Quadratorcosaur, Spino Crankshaft Rex, Mechanotopsis, and the Ankylosaurus, who kind of looks peaceful. Like if you had to choose like three of these to protect yourself, like I am not picking the Ankylosaurus. I am definitely taking Spino and Tyranna, and then probably you know the Mecha over there because they just look the most menacing. You know, the quad, he's got the horn there. He could probably wreck shop, but yeah, I mean, these three just, and this guy just looks like a mongrel. Ankylo just kind of looks peaceful. I know he's got the spike ball back there, but I'm not sure if he's even ever used it. He probably just eats plants. He's probably a carnivore or probably can, you know, float between both. Isn't that like a, yeah, I'm not sure what that technical term is when you eat both. Herbivore is only plants, right? Maybe cannibal. Ah, uh, no cannibal. <laughs> That's when you eat your own kind. All right, enough semantics. We're going to dive right in here and go dino by dino. By the way, I want to interject here and say that I got the Quadratorosaur and Ankylosaurus from eBay seller Carlot Sales. Highly recommended for anything you need cars wise, and I'll leave his eBay store link in the description below. First off, Tyrannosaurus Rex. There he is in the short. Everyone obviously knows him. He's the most popular dinosaur, as you can see in the background there. They did do a monster version of him as kind of like a playset, and I reviewed that a long time ago. I'll leave the link for it in the description below. And I probably will also try and include the video where I had a fight between Tyrannosaurus Rex and the Screaming Banshee. Like out of context, that sounds really like bad, but <laughs> it actually was super cool. And there's your quad. Now the color changer version over here, they refer to him as the baby Quadratorcosaur, but I'm going to say that this is going to be the daddy just because of the fact that his horn is way bigger proportion to his body. Ankylosaurus, more of a background one, I think. This could make for a good color changer though because they're kind of around the same size and shape and there's a lot of skin there that you could have changed color. Machina Turbo Tops appears at the end. I was really not expecting them to push out all these dinos so quickly. Like when I saw Mecha Turbo Tops in the short, I was like, wow, that's awesome. Would love that as a die cast, but I probably won't get it maybe ever and probably at least not for a long time. But at least, you know, to my surprise, my pleasant surprise, they did a main racer version quite quickly. Now, again, to stress it though, Spinal Crank Shafterax here and Mecha Turbinatops are not out yet. They are unreleased. I got them early thanks to a friend, but they will be out soon. The mini blind boxes with the Quadratorcosaur and the Ankylosaurus, though, those are only sold at like weird type stores like HEB, like those regional type stores, not your big box retailers such as Target and Walmart. All right, and then getting into the cave characters here, you have McQueen and Mater. Toss an image of them on the screen. Yeah, I'm really excited to look at Mater here because it's my first exposure to any version of Cave Mater. Like I don't have the McDonald's version open and I always already had this mini racer from the tube set. And of course I just got the color changer version a couple days ago. So let's start with Mater, shall we? I love how he's kind of got like green moss around him, or maybe that's like oxidation of his rust going on with the rust there. But either way, it works. Looks really good. And he's got some like glitter in his paint there. You can see perfectly right there. And so does Lightning McQueen. He's kind of got like a log for his front bumper. The elongated forehead to parallel caveman stereotypes. Here's your base, R29, means he was produced during the 29th week of 2022. This guy was R28. This one was probably way sooner. Yep, R14, so half the amount of time into 2022 as these two in Thailand, of course. The wheels are meant to look like stone blocks that were cut down, different color than McQueen's. 
And then he's got this big bone structure for a towing cable system back here with a giant hook, which he absolutely needed because he used it to fend off the Tyrannomyciosaurus Rex. Wow, I just absolutely love how they did the detailing here with the blue. And it's even textured right there. I also like how everything's like very blocky and stony. Like nothing comes to like a smooth corner. Everything's like it was cut from a stone. So really nicely detailed. Probably one of my favorite mini racers of all time. Like I think this one's better than McQueen just because, I don't know, it appeals to me more. Like look at them. McQueen's cool too. But if you're talking like top 20 favorite mini racers, I think Cave McQueen is there. I think he is. Or no, Cave Mater. I think Cave Mater's there. Cave McQueen, probably top 50, which is still pretty good. It's probably like top 40% of mini racers, maybe a little better than that. So yeah. And now comparing the Cave McQueens, which I already did a review on, they do look to be pretty similar. Maybe a couple of coloring differences, a couple minor like dirt patch differences, but overall they are identical. Still, I absolutely love the creativity behind this spoiler here. You know, a bunch of wooden planks can join with some vine. Like, I just love the creativity behind that from Pixar and Disney. So there's that. And let's get on with the Quadratorcasar now. So again, I think this is like a fully grown one, just in mini racer form, because they're calling this the baby. And he's got such a tiny horn you know, relative to the rest of his body when compared to the mini racer here. So I'm going to say that this would be like your big daddy Quadratorcasar. And I did already kind of compare them in my color changer video. He goes from this color to an orange. So I made sure to have him in this color for the video because it's most accurate to what he looks like in the episode. But as you can see here, they definitely discolored his skin a bit, which is really cool. Made it look dirty in some spots and kind of weathered because he's out there. I mean, he's a barn dweller. As McQueen said, the Quadratorcasars are barn dwellers. They're living in luxury. This guy was produced R30. Very interesting looking base there. The tail is kind of like part of these plastic pieces here, like the like wheel well plank right there and kind of the scales up top as well the color changer tail is green which is a little offsetting it's almost like it's an infected tail <laughs> this quad looks healthy he's got a nicely colored tail as it should be brown <laughs> not green we don't like green tails so this is all die cast but I can't tell. I think the horn is a plastic piece. Yeah, I'm pretty confident it is. It would be cool if it was metal. Probably hurt like hell if you stepped on it, but <laughs> yeah, that's a plastic piece. Same with these. I like how his mouth's open just a little bit, like uh, growling a little bit. And a very sturdy looking bumper there. Cool. Moving on to the Ankylosaurus here. I love how his nose comes to a point right there. That's why it looks cute. Like, and way more docile than the other dinos because he just looks like he's sniffing around. He doesn't really even, yeah, he doesn't have a mouth. He's got rather different tires than what we've seen before. They're a little bit wider and a different color stone. He's got like a little visor right there that's not part of the metal body. He's got some irregular orange scales here and then the tip with the spike ball, which is a very characteristic feature of ankylosauruses in real life and what's also weird i'm not sure if this is intended because we only know it's an ankylosaurus from like the case content and like the code name within it basically because mattel doesn't put like the name of the mini racer they obviously don't on the box because that would be counterintuitive and they don't do it anywhere else so we don't really know if that's actually the official name of this character. It's never said in the show. It's not in any subtitles or on any signage. But the reason I'm making such a big hullabaloo about this is because it's not carified. Like they've carified every other name. And Ankylosaurus is something that absolutely directly 100% exists in real life. So I would not be surprised if this comes out later or if the actual name comes out in the future being something different. 
like, I don't know, this is going to be stupid, but like, um, Axelosaurus. Actually, that ain't bad. That ain't bad, Disney Docket. Axelosaurus. Just carified a little bit. But yeah, I like the texture of it there. Kind of like a shell. And the spike ball's cool. Probably still not fun to step on this guy either. Moving on to the Mecha Turbinatops. Big name. This guy's wheels are very similar to the Quadratorcasar. They're just colored a little bit more red than the orange. This guy looks like a diesel truck that became a dinosaur. I mean, he just looks pissed. <laughs> I love the slits there for his grill. Basically his snout. His bumper here is all jagged to make it look like a bunch of teeth. His date stamp is R30, so it's kind of wild that these are all produced like around the same time, and yet this guy has not breached any semblance of retail or any stores yet at all. His hat there is plastic, smokestack's plastic. Two rows here of scales that lead to a tail, and this tail is almost like rubber. Like I could definitely move this one more than the other tails that we've had. Like This one is way sturdier than this one. But I love how his paint is also kind of textured to look weathered there and like rusted around the fenders. Really nice detail. I've always been a huge fan of the Mini Racer because they've been able to pack so much detail and intricacies into such a small space. So yeah, right now this guy's my favorite. Oh my god, just I'm adoring the six wheelers too. Like, look at these guys. Awesome. All right, next up we have the Spino Crank Shaft Rex. So a lot of people are probably going to say this is an exact repaint of the Tyrannomyciosaurus Rex, and you would be wrong. You would be wrong. The scales are different. Yeah, there's actually quite a few differences here that we'll get into. So first off, the heads are different. You can see that there's more of a indentation there at his jaw than there is on the Tyrannomyciosaurus rex. The horns do look pretty similar in shape, but then you can see that the just shape of the entire head's different. Like this is way flatter and narrower, where this looks more like a classic car that outlines these headlights right here. His mouth's open, open, also open wider compared to the Tyranna. The headlights are bigger, or the nostrils, whatever you want to call it. It's so cool that they're able to make like a dinosaur look so much like a dinosaur. Like, this definitely looks like a dinosaur to me, but it also has very much so car features to it. Like the shape of the head is absolutely a car, right? So really a big fan of that. Again, great creativity on Pixar and Mattel. Well, Disney and Pixar's part. They both have tiny little wheel arms right up top here that don't move. The spinos are in gray. Compared to white, tires are pretty similar, but a little bit lighter. You have R30 and R29, so again, only a week apart, yet this guy's been out for way longer. He's got like a little date code, or a little product code, rather, right under his chin. This guy's got another product code under his chin as well. Some more differences are in these scales here, so you can see that the Tyranna has some shorter ones right off the base of his neck. And then, yeah, the Spino Crank Shafter Rex, like, he is spiky. Like, Spino, on his spine, he is spiky. These are way larger and sharper than the Tyrannomyciosaurus Rex. So I don't know if that was, like, their intention, but it certainly comes off as such. I mean, yeah, you could definitely tell with each one, it's almost, like, double on the Spino. And you can also see some differences in the fenders right there. Like, look, that's so much narrower than right there. Wow. And then the detailing, oh, don't do that. The detailing around the spikes there, like the discoloration. Oh, my God, I'm just drooling over these. They're so cool. I'm so happy that Mattel is just launching themselves into this episode. I think, yeah, I talked about this in my color changer video that Mattel's favorite episode of Cars on the Road is... The Dino Park episode. Or no, I talked about that in this episode, right? Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm sorry. I'm getting confused. I'm recording all these at once. And I did the... What I said in the color changer video is that 
five of the six color changes that have come out came out before their diecast counterparts and three of those still hold to this day. All right, so before we call the day with the Tyranna here, let me compare him to the plastic version that came out in the tube on the go set. It's a good placeholder, you know, obviously it's not diecast, it's all plastic. And it's not as detailed, but still pretty good. You can see here, it's just blue. They didn't paint like any of the discoloration or the spikes or the rims or his mouth, but headlights and grill though. He's got eyes. That's why I think the dinosaur on the road set's like way better than the other two they did. I think they're going to do an Ivy one. I think that got leaked, but yeah, cool stuff. I do have this like air dino right here that it does have a date stamp. So it's not, I don't think, well, actually almost all prototype mini racers have date stamps. This one's like R28 almost. Let's see. Take a look again here. Yeah, I take that back. All dinosaur, oh my gosh, all mini racer prototypes have date stamps. Like there are some that are irrevocably prototypes, but they still have date stamps. But I don't know. You could call this one an error or a prototype. I don't really care. Either way, it doesn't have eyes. <laughs> and you guys know me. I love my no eyes airs. And it's pretty cool. I have like a horde of these blue dinos now. And each of them is different. So it's a little family. How cute. One sleeping. Daddy's probably home sleeping. All right, guys. So let me pull up the on-the-go mat. Because it's going to make for great thumbnail father here. Thank gosh for this, right? I love the accessories that came with this. You got like a nice boulder, <laughs> probably like the spine from, you know, a Tyranna or a Spinal Crank Shaft Rex, the skeleton, eggs, some palm trees. And yeah, you could just get everybody chilling on here. Let me know in the comment section below, who is your favorite dino of the ones I showed today? The only one Mattel has quote unquote announced and not released yet, or that's not here because they haven't released these two yet. But the only one that's not here is the West Philanthropist. There it is. You got it, Disney Docket. <laughs> and McQueen and Mater. How fun, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, my favorites, Mecca, Turban the Tops. But, I mean, honestly, if you asked me to pick a second favorite, I would not be able to do so because they are all so cool. You guys do it. You guys rank the dinos. That'd be awesome. You guys like to rank stuff. Everyone's like, here's my ranked like 36 Piston Cup racers. I'm like, wow. I wish I had that kind of time. All right, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye now.